Hey guys, my name is Stan and in this video I want to talk about why I think now is the perfect time to purchase a RTX GPU, assuming that if you can get your hands on one. But it's not because of ray tracing, but rather because of a feature that's less often talked about, DLSS. And in this video, I want to talk about why DLSS is such a big deal. Well, what is DLSS? You've probably heard about it in the past and you know that it boosts frame rates or something like that, but what does it do exactly? Well, DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling and it essentially allows you to render the game at a lower resolution while retaining the same quality or very similar quality that you game at at full resolution. For example, if you play on a 4K monitor, and you would set DLSS to performance, what it would do is it would render the game at, let's say, 1080p, and then it uses NVIDIA special magic tensor cores and backend deep, deep learning, machine learning stuff, fills in the gaps, and then upsize, re-upscales it to 4K. And in fact, it's really, really close to that full resolution 4K, but your GPU is only churning out a 1080p image. So in that sense, you can imagine that you get a very big boost in frame rates because you're not driving 4K, you're only driving 1080p. Now, when the 20 series GPU first launched, DLSS was a brand new technology and DLSS is in its second iteration, so DLSS 2.0, so it's upgraded a little bit. And since then, there's a lot more games that have the DLSS capabilities or feature built into the game. So that means games like Battlefield V, uh, Control, Final Fantasy XV, uh, Death Stranding, among other games. You know, right now there are a lot of new games that support it. And going forward, you know that almost all new games or all the major titles will support DLSS, NVIDIA's DLSS. So it makes more and more sense to utilize that DLSS. And the thing is, you need an RTX GPU, either a 20 series GPU or a 30 series GPU to be able to have those tensor cores to use DLSS. If you're stuck on a GTX 1080 Ti or a 980 or a 1070, basically a GTX GPU without the tensor cores, you can't use DLSS. So that's why RTX is much more important now, now that DLSS is a thing and a lot of games are actually using it. Now, my main rig that you see behind me has a Founders Edition RTX 3090, which uh, is going to be relatively similar to what you would expect on a 3080, at least within a few percentage points. Um, also, the resolution on my monitor is ultra wide and it's 3860 by 1600, which puts the resolution somewhere between a 1440p monitor and a 4K. So if uh, 1440p is what, 3.6 megapixels and 4K is right around 8.2, the ultra wide here is right around six, so right in the middle. Uh, that's important because as you're scaling the resolutions and as you're playing these games, it makes a big difference in the frame rates that you get. So the very first game that I've got right here, this is Call of Duty Cold War, and it's everything's maxed out with ray tracing turned on. And you can see here, I'm pulling a respectable 51 frames per second in this action scene right here. Now it does fluctuate a little bit, but it's pretty steady. And this is at full resolution. A uh, 50 to 60 FPS is playable for a FPS game, but you know, most of us who have a high refresh rate monitor would like a little bit more. So. In this game, if you enable something like DLSS performance, you get a jump in performance all the way up to, let's say, 85 FPS. So if you go from 55 FPS to 85 FPS, that's a 30 FPS gain just by turning on DLSS. And the whole reason why this is happening is because you're rendering the game on the GPU at a lower resolution and then upscaling it, but still retaining the features like uh, ray tracing and all of the other little good graphical bits. Now, side by side here, you can see this is the very beginning of Call of Duty Cold War. And you can see that you're pulling in a consistent 30 or so FPS more. And this is about 40 to 45% 
better performance by just enabling DLSS performance. And the gains that you're seeing when you enable DLSS on these games is akin to something like a generational leap. It's like a going from a 980 Ti to a 1080 Ti, or from a 1080 Ti to a 2080 Ti, or a 2080 Ti to a 3080 or 3090. You kind of get the point. A 30 to 40% boost in performance, and even up to 50% in some situations. So it's almost as if I'm playing on a 3090 and I'm seeing performance of a 4090. Um, you know, this performance gain is immense. Now in both games here, you can see the GPU utilization is really high. And this means that uh, this is a GPU bound game, meaning CPU limitations are not a thing. So in both situations, we're seeing that we're getting 99% usage in, in, in the one and then 96, 98% utilization in, in the other. One thing to keep in mind is that as you're shrinking the resolution, the CPU performance becomes a bigger deal in order to hit those higher frame rates. So you can see my 3960X is pulling around 16, 17% utilization while the one with the DLSS enabled is pulling 24, 25%. Um, being that it's 24 cores, it's got, it, that's actually a very significant increase in utilization, but you're utilizing more of the CPU core because you're actually using less of the GPU as a result. So you may be thinking there must be some kind of trade-off, right? And indeed there is a slight trade-off in quality, but uh, let's see if you can spot it. So this right here, this is a side-by-side, -side, same side-by-side -side shot now just without any indication of which one's which. And if I had to have you choose or tell me which one is the DLSS performance enabled or DLS or full resolution, I think you'd be very hard to tell. And and indeed, if it weren't for the labeled video clips in the timeline, I would be very hard to tell. I think this is where DLSS shines the most because the quality that you're getting is very good. And it's not like the image is falling apart where uh, you've got very, very soft lines and soft everything. Everything is still relatively crisp. And uh, you keep in mind, I'm running performance, so there are different levels of DLSS. You've got uh, quality, you've got balance, you've got performance, and sometimes you have an ultra performance. So that's what four different levels. And essentially, there are four different resolutions uh, with quality being the highest resolution, highest scaled resolution, and ultra performance being a very, very, very tiny scaled resolution. If you were to run the game at a lower resolution, just straight out without DLSS, then you would see uh, the pixelation and then you would see a lot of aliasing and you, it, it would just not look as good. So it's kind of where the magic of DLSS happens. And the last point I wanna make about quality is that in FPS games where uh, you know FPS frame rates is really, really important, uh, especially when the action starts to occur, I think, even if there were a little bit of difference in quality, the trade-off in gaining 30 FPS in your games is well worth it. Now, the next game here, this is Control. This is also another game that supports DLSS. And you can see here, I'm pulling right around 43, 44 frames at full resolution with everything maxed out with ray tracing and everything enabled. Now, this little clip right here, uh, this is a clip with the two talking, and it's a very consistent clip, so I use that as a testing and example. So again, this right here, you can see the 3090 um, maxed out, 99% utilization, and I'm pulling in a constant 38, 37 FPS during this dialogue. Now, everything is very crisp, as you would imagine in this game. My OBS capture is maybe a little bit more problematic. Um, if you see any artifacts or skipping or non-smoothness, that's kind of probably due to OBS more than anything. But if you ignore the choppiness due to that, uh, the picture quality is, you can see, is very good. Now, the quality setting for DLSS is actually a shrink down to 2560 by 1067 or 2.7 megapixels. And 
if you recall, the full resolution was 6.1 megapixels. We're down to 2.7, so about half the resolution. And by going to half the resolution, we went from 38, 37 frames per second to 64, 65 frames per second. And in fact, I'm actually probably pulling a little higher than that because of OBS recording in the background impacting the frame rates. So high 60s, low 70s frames per second, that's very playable in my opinion. Now, the next version is balanced. Again, we're dropping from 2.7 megapixels down to about 2 megapixels with a resolution of 2227 to 928. So this is less than 1080p ultra wide if, if you're paying attention here. Now we're getting a increase in another increase about 10 frames per second. But you can see here the picture starts to fall apart a little bit in that you get a little bit of the shimmering some uh, effect on some of the things and in her hair, you get a little bit more artifacting. Now, still, this is still really good. And for the frame rates that, you know, gains that you're seeing is still reasonably good, but this is the kind of artifacting or the quality differences that you may see as you ramp up DLSS. Now for DLSS performance, it's 1920 by 1080, one, uh, or 1920 by 800, with a 1.5 megapixels, so we're down significantly from that 6.1, and we're pulling 90 frames per second here, or 80, 80 to 90 frames per second. And the quality, at least the major you know, facial features, everything looks still pretty good. Hair, again, maybe another notch down in the quality of, or the artifacting, and that, especially that, that wall panel shimmers a little bit on the gold, gold lines, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it is what it is. Now, lastly, ultra performance, you're really not recommended to use ultra performance unless you have an 8K monitor. Uh, as you can see, scaling on my monitor, I'm only pulling 0 0.68 megapixels. <laughs> That's 533p uh, resolution here. Of course, you're gonna be pulling 100, 111, 113, almost 120 frames per second here because you're run rendering such a small screen, but still, it's amazing that you're able to preserve the picture that well with DLSS, even though the game is rendering such a small little screen in comparison to the original resolution. Now, another example here, this is uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077, we all know, is a very intensive game. Uh, this, again, with everything maxed out, with ray tracing enabled all the way. And you can see here, I am pulling right around 22, 24 frames per second. Without OBS, I'm pretty probably pulling maybe closer to 30, but still, 30 FPS on this game is really not playable, and it is, it is, not, it is not a fun experience. And, um, it, and it's probably even worse in OBS, honestly, because... Uh, it's very choppy. The recording is very choppy because my system is just stressed so much. Now, you can see this game is beautiful with, uh, with ray tracing, everything, everything looks so crisp and very, very vibrant. But again, the frame rate is just unplayable in the low 20s. So what happens when you enable ray tracing? Uh, you can see here in the settings, if you go to video, you know, DLSS, you have different settings, but performance is kind of where I like to play Cyberpunk because this allows me to get a good 50 or 60 FPS in my actual gameplay. And you can see here all of the ray tracing, all of the elements, all of the graphical fidelity is retained and it still looks extremely well even with DLSS on. And, and, and you can see, again, OBS is really just struggling here because my system is, is pushed to the max here. And I kind of want to take the time to talk about why I ended up going with a 30 series GPU as I did uh, over the last couple months here. Because uh, up until now, I've had a 1080 Ti and I've been pretty happy with the performance for most games, playing on high and, and whatnot and maybe dropping down the fidelity a little bit if I need. But it, was until, it wasn't until Cyberpunk 27, 2077 and Control that came out where I really felt like I couldn't play at a medium to high rate at a respectable frame rate. I was pulling around 20, 30 frames on Cyberpunk, even in medium. And without DLSS, I, I couldn't ramp 
the the resolution down to be able to play at a very good frame rate. So that's where I felt like DLSS really, really made the difference in uh, in, in quality here, in, in in the way the games play. So it's kind of why I finally bit the bullet and picked up a 30 series GPU. The this last example here is of Death Stranding, and Death Stranding isn't a very uh, intensive game. It looks good. But you can see here at full resolution on the 3090, I'm pulling over 100 frames per second already. Now, in this situation, what's good about DLSS is that you can choose the quality of your resolution. You can, you know, you can do quality, balanced, uh, performance, and ultra performance here. And with just DLSS quality enabled, you can see that I went from about 100 to 110 to now 130 FPS. Now this is where I end up playing this game because I found that if I go to balance or quality, I find that I get a little bit too much degradation in the picture and I don't get a significant increase in FPS because again, I'm pulling 120 frames, 130 frames per second already. It's already smooth enough and any higher, I run into CPU bottleneck. So, uh, if you're using DLSS, uh, you kind of want to find that sweet spot for your system without without either going to CPU bottleneck or without losing picture quality. And for quality DLSS in this game, I find that's the best result. Side by side by side with all three, we can see the quality difference or potential quality differences between the, the three. And I've got full res, DLSS quality, and performance. Online, I've seen images of DLSS quality actually be better than full res. And I think it has to do with using such a high texture and, and, and using that as AI you know, super sampling. And that kind of fills in the blank that you actually don't even have in the full resolution version. DLSS performance looks just as decently good, but again, I didn't find the need to increase the performance even more, so that's why I usually play on DLSS quality. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what DLSS do, can do for your gaming experience and why RTX GPUs are more important than ever having that DLSS capability. As you can see, the RTX longevity has been increased dramatically by just having our DLSS because you know several years down the road, for example, if you choose to still stick with the RTX GPU that you purchased, you can shrink the, the resolution and, or ramp up the DLSS and still play at a reasonable frame rate with all of the graphical whatever is enabled. And I, I think DLSS is only gonna get better from here on out. Most games already support DLSS 2.0. Once Nvidia refines their algorithm, whatever, they're gonna come out with a 3.0, 4.0, and they're gonna do that update it with the games and whatnot. So it's only gonna get better from here. So hopefully this video convinces you that now is the time to pick up a GPU if you can get your hands on one. Uh, if you have any questions or thoughts about DLSS, make sure to sound off in the comments down below. And if you can give this video a like, smash that like button, that'd be great. Anyway, my name is Stan. I'll see you guys in the next one.